Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to continue with our series on technical drawing and demonstrate to you guys how to do orthographic projection. In today's episode, you're going to need a sheet of A4 paper, a ruler, a pencil, and if you're going to make a lot of mistakes, probably bring a rubber with you as well, but not essential. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so uh, I've robbed a, another sheet from a piece of the work that we do in the academy, which looks at orthographic projection. So if you're from our academy and you're going to be doing this piece of work, then you can get straight onto this. If not, then don't worry too much. I'll walk you through it and I'll explain as we're going along. Right, so first of all, then, what have we got up here? We've got a couple of little bits that sort of explain what's going on. So essentially, it's a simple way to show an object in 3D form and it's favorited by uh, many because of its easy to draw and it allows you to draw things in 3d really quickly uh, this drawing style is useful to see an object in part 3d and, and project multiple views in what is called either an engineer's drawing or a simple working drawing the rule is to create your object in two dimensions first then project your lines at a 45 degree angle from one side of the object now let's see if we can have a look at how that's going to be done over here then. So first of all, we can straight create a new layer, so I'm not drawing on the same thing. Right, now look at number one then. So it says that we have to project a 45 degree angle. So what's that look like then? So 45 degree angles going off like that. And how I show students that way, you've got your vertical, which is going to be straight up and straight down like this. You have the horizontal, which goes straight across, and then your 45 degree angles right in the middle. So uh, that's how I would train students to do look at it there so 45 degrees and if I was to just put a straight line across there that angle there is 45 degrees just like that angle there is 45 degrees so let's sketch this onto here then so I would start from these three points the reason I'm starting from those three points is because I can't start from here because I just go through my object so I'm going to strike a line 45 degrees. Now, if we've got a ruler, I'm going to strike it like that. I'm going to strike this line at 45 degrees as well. And this one at 45 degrees as well. So I just pull my lines out 45 degrees. This stage doesn't really matter how far they go apart. Next step then is to create a horizontal line. So this is my horizontal line. And I'm going to place that there. And you'll see that I've just, just cut through my objects. If I zoom in a little bit, I've just cut through the other end just a little bit there and a little bit here. That's important for us so that we know we get this right. Next then, here, where I've had those two lines have crossed, I'm then going to pull a vertical line down. So remember, vertical lines just go straight up and straight down, like that. So there we go. Now, if I wanted to, with a little eraser, I could rub out these edges, like so. Neaten it up a little bit. And there it is, my, my three-dimensional cuboid. Let's see if we can apply that now to a little bit more complicated shape. So all I've drawn here is I've drawn a rectangle here, and I've drawn a square here. Um, so we're going to do the same thing again. If it, if it helps you, I would circle the points where you're going to start from, but not really essential. So I'm going to take those off because we know what we're doing now. And I'm going to put a very faint line at 45 degrees like that all the way across and then quite simply now if you need to you can rewind me and watch this again but quite simply now I'm going to put a horizontal line I'm going to sketch down to the bottom if you've got a ruler you can use your ruler I'm going to cross there now I haven't quite quite pulled that off properly have I so it's, it, it needs to be pulled a bit further across so no problem I'll just pull that across like that and then sketch this down here like this then with my little eraser I can rub out my construction lines or alternatively, I can just choose to go around this with a nice dark edge to make it stand out. And there I have a little bit more of a complicated shape there. I might be thinking, oh, that's great, sir, but how do you do something like this then with curves? Well, it gets a little bit more tricky. And I know that most of you out there will be able to do this, so let's see if we can get going. So from here and here, and I suppose from there and there, is basically where my lines sort of stop being straight and then start to curve. So if I pull that off at 45 degrees like that, now that one I can't quite do, but you can see I can just 
pull it there. Pull that across, pull that across, pull that across, like that. And then what I'm going to try and do is I'm aiming to copy this curve here. So, copy the curve on. That should then be a straight line. And I'm going to copy this curve here. This should then be a straight line, up and down, or vertical, like that one. And then I'm just copying this curve. And then, again, I'm going to do that there. So there we are. Uh, now, because I've got it inside here, I could also start from here and go all the way down like that, and then put that line down, go across like that. And with my razor, I can move these bits out. And then there you go, I've got another 3D object with something that I can see straight through as well, so that's quite exciting. And then lastly, uh, well, we've got nothing here, so we can have a, have a bit of a dabble, and we can go for something of our own creation, so... What I'd say, like I stated at the start, is start with a two-dimensional object. doesn't matter what that two-dimensional object is. But if I create something a little bit random here. There we go. Like that. And then come across. And then just straight down like that. That object I can then project 45-degree angle lines. Like this. And then I just start at the top, horizontal first, then vertical. I've got this line now, I can pull that line up at an angle, straight across, straight down, horizontal, straight down again. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There's our, our projected orthographic three-dimensional objects. So it's a nice little bit of a practice there, and let's get into something a little bit more detailed. So let's go for some objects that perhaps uh, require a little bit more thought. Let's go for something like a, a toy train or something like that. So uh, let's go for like a, an old fashioned wooden train. So a little sketched, first of all. Let's make this a bit bigger so you guys at home can see this. I'm going to, for this, I'm going to keep most of my objects rectangles, squares, circles, that kind of thing. Not too many angles because I, I don't really want to overcomplicate this drawing and then again I might have I'll put, I'll put one on let's just go for one let's go for one little angle it's better a little trapezium there there we go oh, no come on come on treat ourselves to a second trapezium now you can see here, I'm just sketching this. Not very well at the moment because those, those wheels aren't in proportion. But that's the, the, the goal of a sketch, I suppose, is to not worry too much about that. Okay, so there we have it then. I've, I've kind of made my little train. And to be quite honest, I'd be quite cross with the students if they did that for me. And the reason for that is, of course, it's far too small. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Right, now, just for argument's sake here, let's go into the Mr. DT Purple, just so you can see really clearly where my projection lines are coming from. So, if you need clues at home, if you're doing this one, as to what we're going to project, and hopefully I get all these. Sometimes I might miss a couple, because I know I'm good, but still only human there we go and then, so then start projecting those lines nice and soft 45 degree angles now does it matter if they're not 45 degrees well technically yes it does matter however the drawing will still be 3d so if I just very quickly go into something like that and just make these very tall it would just changes how accurately the drawing looks I mean you can see there that there's two three-dimensional cuboids there but none of them are at 45 degrees so it doesn't quite look right however it's not going to be the end of the world but do try and get it at 45 degrees and of course there are graphic tools out there that you can buy if, you've, if you're really interested in this style of drawing you can buy them instead of what we call set squares and one of those set squares is set up at 45 degrees so basically if you've never seen it before it's a, it's a device that looks like that 
So you might be going, ah, oh, yeah, I know those so we've used those at school. Well, this angle here is a 45 degree angle, so you can use that to project your lines. Let's get rid of that for now because it might confuse. And then we're going to come in with the horizontal lines now. So uh, I suppose for argument's sake, not it's not really needed, is it? But I'll, I'll do it for the sake of a few of you might appreciate it if I if I turn these lines horizontal like that. So put my horizontal lines across. I've got a little one there as well. And there's one there. And there's one there as well. And then I'm going to be moving into my vertical lines in a second. So let's go something completely different, like a green. And let's pull the vertical lines down. Now, this one here, oh, uh, do I need to turn that over? I don't, I'll just try and do it that way. That line there, I'm going to copy, parallel. Now, if you imagine that if I was going to shade that all in the same direction like this, line, 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 line. They're going to be moving parallel like train tracks like we've talked in previous videos so they're just going to move like that parallel to the work now a lot of students here this, this is the mistake a lot of students make they will go like that and join up their object now you can see if i zoom out that doesn't look right it's 3d but it doesn't look right so you must get into the habit of just ignoring that and just drawing vertically even if you have to cut through because you can always just rub these bits off to make it what it needs to be. Now you can see there I've missed one. I've missed a little line there, a little cheeky line. It nearly got away from me. And also, I noticed that my window, I missed out that little guy there. Lovely. So there we have our three dimensional train. Now, because I've sketched this, it's gonna be difficult for me to shade it. However, you guys at home at this stage, you can start shading any color you like. Although I would argue that it's probably going to look best if it's like a wooden train. Now, some of my students might recognise this from a project they did in year seven, because uh, we did a we did a rendering technique where we had to look at trying to make this look like it's made out of different textures. You can apply the same technique to that if you like. And let's just see if there's enough there. Oh, there is. So let's, let's just well, maybe not. Not there. There isn't. If there's enough of a defined line. Now, if I'd use a pen this then it would be a lot easier to do that but I'm just gonna drop on a little bit of shade just so you guys at home can see I have to shade that in my by hand just go, so you guys can see at home how it's transformed into this three-dimensional object now and a little bit there I missed boom I could I suppose get carried away here I don't want to spend too long on this but a couple of little highlights in there for the window just to make it look like it's made of glass and then try not to confuse this line here in fact that might be a bit of an error there if I shade that back a bit there we go there we go I nearly made a mistake myself so there you are there's a little 3d train using that projection technique I mean, you could do what I did before and that's a rubber mr. David don't do that I could pull these lines underneath like this a little bit of shadow for those wheels you can add extra details in and have a lot of fun with this you can maybe want to add some windows or something like that on there as well oh we're getting carried away now we're getting carried away right well so there you go let's zoom back out so we can see what we've done there so there's our orthographic projection let's move back to home base and talk about what we've learned today uh, just before that, actually, I'll drop it onto Capture. So there was an opportunity for you to uh, pause the, the video at that stage and you can have a look at that in more detail. Uh, something I might start doing in more of our videos just in case you weren't sure. Or maybe the screen's a bit small. So, what have we learned in today's session? We've talked about and learnt about the orthographic projection, or part of the orthographic projection. More to follow in our next video in the series. We've looked at 45 degree angles being the projection lines, not like isometric, which is 30 degrees either side, but it only has one projection. And it's a fast way of drawing in three dimensions. It's one that's quite favorited by students and designers alike because it's a quick way of doing it. And uh, yeah, just have fun with it. So I would start that session just like I did 
with your simple practice techniques first rectangle a couple of rectangles maybe something with a bit of a curve and then something a bit more complicated and then move straight on to designing something like a, a, a 3d object keep to the train if you can't think of any other ideas but use your imagination and uh, let me know how you get on in this video so I'll leave it there then it's just over 15 minutes it's not too long not too short and hopefully we can uh, drive forward with with that until the next time then stay safe don't forget to subscribe bye now <laughs>